Hey up everybody and welcome back. Well I hope you weren't too confused last week when suddenly a video from a different series jumped up but as I mentioned I've been sort of getting bits and pieces for that to finish it off like those little rubber things for behind the uh, tank badges and so on and then I didn't actually get anything done on this. Well I did a couple of little jobs which I'll show you. So it came towards the end of the week and I thought right let me rush this last little bit for the C15 and that would do you for a for a video so I did that uh, just out of interest as I walked in this morning I went straight over to it turned the petrol on turned the ignition on and it started second kick and he did that yesterday as well so there you go as I say customeritis okay so what are we going to do now we're back on the order well you may have noticed there wasn't a title to this week's video and that's because uh, a bit like the C15 we're getting to bits I'm gonna do what I can I still don't know when I'm gonna get the barrels I've got a feeling we're gonna be completely finished and not have them and what I may do if uh, sort of the, the nowhere in sight is get steam shop to just bore the cast iron ones for these pistons which you can do and then I might just because taking the head and that off later on is is minor I might just finish the engine with those cast iron barrels so we can get this run in make sure everything's all right and what have you and then when the alloy barrel comes I'll just uh, change them over so what are we going to do in the meantime well as I say it's going to be whatever bits and pieces we can do I got uh, the spring to put on top stand so we'll do that today I've done a little couple of little jobs over on the other side one of which I'll show you I probably almost certainly will redo so you'll see that I came out one day and I had an hour or so so I just fiddled on and then I thought oh I haven't got the camera and sorry to sell you this but I thought sod it <laughs> I'm just gonna do this and carry on so what we're going to do over the coming weeks is, as I say, is a couple of things to do on that. We'll completely rebuild the bottom end of the engine. Uh, I actually still have the valves and everything to put in the head. We'll do that. I have the rockers to put back in the rocker box. We'll do that. We'll get right to the point where we've got just the barrels to do. Then I have something interesting which has arrived, which probably might just make one video. So what I might do is switch over and do that if I think the barrels are close to coming. All right, so um, can't think of anything else that happened. Well, I did have my birthday. I was 70, and uh, but that comes around every year, so that's nothing special. All right, let me show you the other side, and then we're gonna put this spring on here, okay? Right, well, whoops, knocking things over. Got the... Uh, chain tensioner on see I put a little stop here what I've done is I made a let me take it off and I'll show you because this has got to be stripped off here I made a little alloy extension I found that if I put the spring on the outside it just about was level with the outside of the spring and arm so as I say I made up a little stop and bronzed it in there made this piece up so that now goes on there and that hooks on there so that all works perfectly so let me show you the other thing now this was something I hadn't thought of and uh, Thankfully a viewer noticed it. You remember when I did the exhaust it just ended back here and it was pointed out to me wait a minute won't mud get in that and I thought you're right it will it needs to come out. So I made this curved piece so now anything coming will just hit there but this is the piece I'll probably remake. I slipped up because I took the rear suspension unit off to make all the measurements because it was back in here and then when I got it all finished and I put this on I thought ah oh, damn look it's chances are it's going to warm up it's going to heat 
the actual oil reservoir, the, the damping section of this. So what I might do is cut it off and just lengthen it a little bit. We'll see. What I, it's something that can be done anytime. So what I might do is when we're finished and we tried it out, you know, I'll ride it for a while. If this doesn't feel warm at all, I'll leave it as it is. All right, so let's go and have a look at the uh, prop stand. Now, I also made a very slight mod to the prop stand. I thought it was coming too far this way. So all I've done is I've, I've bronzed on a little piece of eighth inch and now it doesn't hit this at all. And when we put our rubber on, it'll go up there nicely. So what we want is a spring and I don't know if you can see, I've marked it up here. Basically the way the spring on this is going to work is that, I don't know what that is, it's probably, that's going to be 90, I don't know, say 110 or 100 degrees. So basically what we want is that when this is at 50 degrees or whatever the theoretical number is we want a pin there and a pin here in a straight line through that and that means that when it's up there it's going to be offset and when it's down here it's going to be offset from the center line so the spring will be holding that up there tension and then when it comes down you'll be stretching the spring because you get into a wider part of the arc and then when it gets around here because again it's gone off center it'll pull it and hold it there now this spring is a really heavy duty spring but when when you're sizing springs and what have you what you've got to take into account is the work it's got to do now this is really light it doesn't take all that much tension to hold it up there it takes a little bit more than you'd think because as the bike's bouncing around you don't want it so loose or under such a low tension that it can flop around like that you want it so it's going to be held in place here you only need enough tension so that when you pick the bike up or the bike's knocked it doesn't just pop back up out of the way but if this weighed pounds and pounds then you'd need a really strong spring and you'd need the spring to be under t a good bit of tension so you'd probably have it further stretched out than we're going to need it all right so i like these springs because they've got this long piece here which as you can see is offset even from the center line it allows you space there if the hook was here you'd have to have the space where the coils of the spring are but here See, we can, uh, it gives us much, makes it much easier for that to swing over. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the, uh, the washer dodge. I'll show you that because I know we've got new viewers. This spring, I could make that, put a pin on there and say, okay, I want the next pin to be down here and then find it's almost impossible to stretch it down to it. But if we use the spring dodge, it's not only easier to put a spring on, but it shows us where the spring is going to be when it's stretched. All right, so let's go over to the vise and we'll do that. So what we want to do, let's say in this instance, so we know how long it's going to be, but you can use this to put springs on, is to stretch this spring and to make it stay stretched. So what you do is you put it in your vise like thus you get a load of washers the size of the washers depends on the size of the spring you bend it over so that you're starting to open up the coils this spring really is strong actually then it's the wrong size washer in that box then you start to pack it out See, I might need some thinner washers. Yeah, let me get some thinner washers to do this. All right, these are better. There's two in. I 
and you just keep doing this Whoop. because it's one of those things where as you open it up some of them will drop out so let me just keep doing this and then I'll bring you back and you work your way up putting some washers in and you put them in on both sides now you can see it's opening the coils up I should have measured this spring to show you how much extra length we're getting at it but I'll do it put a few more in and then we'll take it over to the bike right up again position now I actually had to put some tape around these washers because I was bending it up so, so much they kept dropping out so there it is with I don't know about six or seven washers on each side so as I said we want that to be here so we're going to put the top one that's all the way up there we could actually measure this it's all the way there I would say about there is good so if we're going to put I'm also going to make sure it doesn't stick out too much because we have the uh, brake pedal so you've always got to think a couple of steps ahead so we're going to put it there and then down here we're going to put it that far down and it wants to be on the top there okay so that's where we're going to put it lost the top of my pen there we go so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole in there and we're going to drill a hole in there and then we're going to make up two of these so this is the diameter that's going to fit in the hole we drill so that's going to be say a quarter inch this is going to be 5 16th then at the top the height we want we're going to turn in a groove and that's for the spring to fit into at each end all right so let's go and find some 5 16th stock and we'll turn two of those up and we're going to make them oh. want to be about half an inch to the groove maybe not even that much actually no only about three eighths to the groove there and a quarter inch to the groove here because this is actually a little lower than that what we'll do is we'll make them so they're a nice tight fit and then we can put them in and sort of check the spring against it and go from there so let's go and turn a couple of those up there's the first stage turned down to I've actually used three eighths down to a quarter inch so that's going to be a tight fit on there tap that on there it'll hold that nice and tightly and then eventually we'll bronze it so now what I'm going to do is measure three eighths up here and with the cut off tool cut a groove in and then we'll cut it off next stage is the groove for the spring now the springs eighth inch so I've made the groove a little bit wider you don't want it to be tight because that might go in at a little bit of an angle so there's just a little bit of play so all I'm going to do now is cut that off and round the top off and then make another one and there's the first one done and pressed in put it in the vise and squeezed it up rather than battering it with a hammer and, and damaging the top end so I'll bronze that in and then we'll put the one in the swinging arm as well time for an erratum because I have led you astray once again hold on just turn the uh, converter off when I measured how far that was I shouldn't have measured it there should I because that as I already pointed out was the longest point so as you can see I've had to move it because here is shorter 
and when I put it up to there it was loose it doesn't want to be loose it wants to be stretched so now we're at the right length so a little bit of remedial hole welding up and then I'll bronze that on and as you can see I've put this one in here I'll bronze that one on there sorry right well let's see if this is going to work I'm slightly worried I've put that at too low an angle but anything can be fixed all right so that's going to go on there going to go on there let's get a little something to help that on there which is good I wanted it tight there oh. Oh. I don't know about the rest of you but I hate putting springs on particularly when they're as strongly strong as this because the the washers actually don't help here. We are so close to getting it on there. There. On you go. Right, so you see that wasn't too difficult to put on. And now what we do... Is we pull the springs up. so it stretches it let me see it come out easier should be fine all right so that's that done right well I found two extra jobs one thing I'd forgot or forgotten I should say and one thing that I didn't realize was a problem but is I forgot about having a steering stop and as I want the tank to come right up to here because I don't want it to stop back there it's got steering stops on here so what I'm going to do is put something here I found that if I put that in there like that made out a quarter inch then these just nicely butt up against it when it's in the center so I made a little piece put a couple of prettying up holes in it at a quarter inch 4130 so that's going to go on there and when it's in the center it'll bump up on that and actually with that hole there I could even put a little piece in that little piece of rod in that if I find it's not uh, it's not right but I think it'll be okay or I could even drill and tap these and put a little stop in there but I think quarter inch thick right on the center line is just going to stop that at a good point so let me fasten that on there so that's on there Not my best bit of bronzing but we'll tidy that up and uh, pick that up bonk bonk just nice all right and when that's all bronzed on that will be nice and strong okay the other thing which I hadn't noticed right well swinging arm has two grease nipples to be honest, I don't even see how these grease nipples get any grease to the bearing, but <clears throat> I suppose they must. But what I've forgotten, well I've forgotten about the nipples, 
but they're actually on the bottom that goes that way and of course that goes in there like that there isn't enough room for the nipples so I was worried about that for a bit and then I thought of something which actually now I look at it still might not work hold on a little bit of serendipity here you remember I cut these holes well those holes are three quarters of an inch away from that so I can put the uh, nipple on the back of that and there'll be plenty of space for it okay so that's what we'll do I'll mark it because the nipples are about they're about a thumb length in so they'll just be about here which would be nice hang on I've got a torch out to show you this so they'll go just nicely on there all right so that is that problem saved from being a problem uh, actually Steve Shop mentioned this wouldn't it be nice if I could put some plugs in there and I suddenly thought about the ones I bought for the ends of the tubes the square well oblong tubes that I used for the uh, frame jig God, I'm getting old look I can hardly get my words out how about that again who would have known I'd have cut that the right size to be able to fit them so okay we've got uh, some holes to drill and of course I'll have to take the bearings out of the swinging arm so I can drill into it and tap quarter inch 20 thread for new new grease nipples so let me do that right that's that job done there's the old hole sealed up with a bit of bronze and there's the two new holes drilled and tapped and I checked actually I marked these up when it was still in the frame and checked that when it swings they stay in the uh, view of the hole so you can get your grease gun to them <clears throat> now before we leave the swinging arm I'm going to show you a mod that I make right here in the manual is the swinging arm diagram to show the components right now that's the thrust washer at the end that's that uh, nylon thing that's a little oil seal here's the piece that the bearing runs on and to maintain the pressure all the way through there is a distance piece in the center and you'll see the distance piece has got these two little things on it right well the idea of these is that you saw where the grease nipples were one there one there and they act as a seal so this tube is a smaller diameter than the ID inside here but these little things are the same OD as this ID so when you pump your grease in there instead of it filling the whole of this it just goes in there and supposedly finds its way into here it's a bit iffy to me at the best of times but the thing is those there are like that so when the manual says removing the bearings the bearings themselves may now be driven out from the opposite side well you can't with that in and when you drive that out you destroy these two things so after because this just drives out through the bearings that will fit through the bearing you see so I'll show you what I do instead of that feeble little thing I make two of these now these fit inside the swinging arm and they're a tight fit on there and what I do is I knock them on to the place where that would be so that the uh, the grease nipple is here somewhere you see and then when they're on I either weld or bronze them on on the back side now what that does is twofold one it fulfills the purpose of this in that it stops the grease coming down here also now it gives you a face rigidly mounted on this so that you can actually drive the bearings out and then you just put this back in all right 
And if you look in the parts book, they aren't listed. It's shown, as you saw in the drawing, as, uh, as having them just there. It's a one piece thing. So, stupid idea. What they could have done, of course, is when they made this tube, this tube could be this or D, just turned down a little bit at each end. And then again, same thing, it would have, you could have used it as a drift to get the bearings out and it wouldn't have damaged the, the seal each time. So anyway, let me knock those on there, the requisite amount, and bronze them up, and then we will move on. Right, well, there's the piece made. There you can see the, uh, the two holes for the grease nipples. So now we're just going to put that back in there and put the bearing in this end. So this is a good fit you see in there. Now we pop that in and pop the bearing in that end and that's done. And as I say, next time when we want to take it out, we can just drift the bearings out really easily. Right, well, got a bit of a disappointment here. I was going to finish this week off showing you the rolling chassis put together painted. I'm doing it in my sort of corporate colours if you like. Uh, British Racing Green and White Mud Guards. But as I've got it out to do stuff I'm finding shadow areas all over that I didn't hit properly. And the thing is when you paint it uh, the way I've done this where the clear coat and the base colour are mixed together um, the covering isn't quite as good. With the yellow it was awful but um, this place you know you get like on edges sometimes where it doesn't but I'm finding it all sorts of little places. I don't know how I did that. Swinging arm all the bits and pieces are fine but the frame has just it's got like it's got up to the top of here and I just can't let that go. The rest it's 95% good maybe even more but I can see those couple of percents and I'm not prepared to to let it be finished like that. So that's going to be it for this week. We'll be starting off next week because I'll look this is Saturday. I'm going to mount this up and there's a run there as well. Look, oh dear, that'll have to be sanded out. So I will uh, get this ready and paint it tomorrow. Maybe even today, it's not that late. But then Monday, Tuesday, particularly with this temperature here, it'll have had a chance to cure nice and hard. And the first thing we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll put it all together. Another thing actually, I bought new, I went in, I want grease nipples, quarter 20 thread. And they gave me them, come back, they're not quarter 20 thread, I don't know what they are. They're not quarter 28, I don't know whether they're metric ones, but they won't screw in here anyway. Well, they won't screw in a quarter 20 or a quarter 28 nut. So, you know, I mean, how more exact can you be than that? And they still sold me the wrong things. So anyway, I'm a bit miffed at that. But uh, as I always say, anything can be fixed. So I'll just give this a rub down to scuff it up and just give it probably, well, it will be one coat just to... Uh, cover over those few areas that uh, aren't the right deep green. Okay, so that's it for this week. So until we see you next week, you stay safe and enjoy yourselves.